Welcome to today's episode of the OnTrack Whiteboard Series. My name is Vince Mazur, and I'm a product marketing engineer here at Altium. Today we're going to talk about product release. When it's time to release your product, it's essential to have all design aspects, such as your board fabrication, assembly, related documentation, conveyed accurately, completely, and consistently. The alternative to doing that can be expensive rework, manufacturing respins, or even defects that make it into the field. So what exactly is product release? We're, we're taking data, we're extracting data from the design. It's more than just saying, hey, my design is ready for release. You actually extract data that is used by downstream collaborators to complete essential processes, such as PCB fab assembly and the corporate aspect of archiving IP. So each of these have various outputs. In the case of PCB, Gerber is a standard output that's used for conveying the artwork, if you will, the traces, the layers, the, uh, the silk screen, uh, 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 etc for printed circuit board fabrication. There's also other formats. We find that most of our customers are using Gerber, but there's ODB plus, plus. There's uh, Gerber X2. Uh, a, a closely associated file for board fabrication is the drill file. The drill file is used to convey the position and the diameters of the holes and any slots that are on the board. In assembly, we have pick and place files. That designates where, what component goes to what location on the board. Closely related to that is the ingredients, if you will, for the board or the bill of materials. And in archiving, we're going to archive all types of data that release or that relate to product release, such as not only the source files, but any ancillary documents, research, uh, Excel spreadsheets, any of that type of data. So who really uses release data? Who are the collaborators involved? First and foremost, release data is the golden IP of an enterprise that creates designs. Uh, back in the earlier days of my career, when we re would, would release a package, we literally released it in its physical form with, with paper, with film. Uh, we would even include ROM chips that had device software in it. All of that would be packaged into an envelope and submitted to essentially a room that was fortified, not unlike a bank vault. It was impervious to natural disasters. It was impervious to fire. That's where we stored the fruits of all of the labor and all of the effort of the design team. That's the way we did it back then. You literally released it as golden IP. And talking about that a bit, this IP, this release, that's where you want to start when you upgrade the product, when you derive extra products out of that. You want a golden starting point. So that's why it's so important to have complete release packages. But other entities are going to use this downstream. Certainly contract manufacturers. If you have a test fixture built for your board, uh, they'll use that design data. Internal technical pubs, uh, sustaining engineering, the group that might take that product after it's released and, and continue evolving it. There are groups in, within companies that margin enhance existing designs. In short, there is a variety of entities that will use this release data. And like I said, it's one of the keys is storing that data that represents that corporate IP. We might also mention at this point, a lot of you may be smaller operators, a couple of people designing some products, you may not think you have time to formalize your release process. It's very important that you do that because that is your IP. And there's a good chance that if you ever want to partner with another company or possibly be acquired, if you can show companies the order of your, your release data while you're showing them the order of your accounting books and everything is nice and formal, it's going to increase the value of your enterprise. So it's key. 
Now, the, the, the situation today is that we typically release when we need aspects. So you'll do a release for your PCB fab, you'll do a separate release operation for your assembly, separate release for archive. And one of the challenges is we'd all like to think that we can just release once and be good. Usually that's not the case. Uh, a lot of times you might hear back from your, your manufacturing company or your fab company saying you got a little problem, you need to, this, need to move this trace over, and you're going to come over here and do a revision to your design. And because the PCB company told you that's what you needed to do, you generate that, but you forget about these files. And I think you'll know what can happen in this situation. You have an out of sync scenario and that's because we think of these as separate. What I'm talking about today is evolving this to something that is a little more error uh, less error prone and provide you a little more insulation against these types of, of risks of having this out of sync situation. Talking about doing something as a one click batch process where you define all of the aspects that you want to release to and then you can simultaneously generate all of these aspects in your release package at once in, in separate units of data that you could then forward to those entities. So we might have multiple fab vendors, each with slightly different uh, data requirements, and we can define those. You might have the same with assembly. You might have test engineering group, technical pubs, ECAD, MCAD, and of course archive. And one of the advantages of doing this in a single click is that you're not only able to initiate the release process, but you're also able to invoke all of the electrical rules, DRC, and bomb checks so that you can assure that your design is ready to release, it passes all the tests, and a big one is bill of materials because you can make sure that your parts are available, that they're not end of life, that they're not you know, uh, risky parts. You can do that at the time of release, one click, and then generate all of the aspects. So that's what we're, we're embracing with this idea of single click batch release. All aspects, the same design source. What that results in is assuring that these types of problems don't happen and that your versions for all of your aspects are in sync together. So to summarize, the release process is critical. In fact, at this stage, that release is your product. It certainly is your board design, if that's all you're making, but that is your product. And the unfortunate reality is that there are many failure pathways when you're designing electronic products. Not only could you not use the right component, the component that you spec to be inserted in there could be compromised or at the edge of the spec. It may be unavailable. Uh, there are so many pathways throughout all of electronics design that can come back and bite you. You need to seize the opportunity to mitigate the risks associated with something as relatively simple as just making sure that you have consistent, complete, and accurate data release. That's all I wanted to cover today. I certainly would appreciate it if you, if you found value in this content to share it, to like it, and comment, it, comment on it so that others can, can find it. And certainly appreciate your attention uh, have a super day, and thank you for attending.